Hey everyone, this is Crystal from Open to Public HVAC School, and today we're going to talk about gas valves, how they work in the order of operations in your furnace, and how you can test them to see if this is your problem. So, go. Yeah. All right, we are here at the furnace. Um, as you can see, this gas valve looks different than the one that we looked at earlier. Also, this gas valve has a secondary wire here that goes to ground, so yours can have that as well. And as you can see, even though it has all of these <clears throat> what look like different letters, as you can see, you're only using two wires here, which is just a normal single stage gas valve. So when you're testing a gas valve, uh, I know it sounds really dumb, but follow your gas line over here. There's your flex, and you're going to go up, see if I can get a good angle here. That is your gas stop. Uh, some people call it a gas cock as well, um, but for the most part, I just say gas stop. Um, make sure that that is open, that's your open and close, that's basically your shutoff valve. So make sure that is open and that it is on. Also, again, sounds dumb, but make sure that your switch is on. Sometimes if you have someone service it, they might forget to do that or might not be getting gas to your unit and it's not on. So let's knock the dumb stuff out first. Now, when we're testing this, which we'll do in just a second, it's better to test it with the wires off of the gas valve. So that way you don't get any strange readings. So we're going to remove these we're going to connect them to our voltmeter. And again, we're going to set this to volts AC. And we're going to check and make sure we are getting our 24 volts to the gas valve. So first thing we're going to check to make sure it is actually getting the correct voltage from the board. Should be getting voltage to the gas valve in just a moment. There we go. There's our 26 volts to the gas valve or 24. And it cut because we don't have gas in the unit right now. So you should be getting continuous 24 volts to your unit. If you're not, there's something going on there with the board not sending signal like it should be. Right now, I'm just bypassing the thermostat here because the thermostat is kind of far for me to have to go over to. But uh, there's our second try there, which it'll try one more time and then it'll go into a lockout. But that's what you should be seeing uh, and that way you know that the board is sending power to the gas valve and that the gas valve might possibly not be opening like it should. Always keep in mind that anything you tape down or jump together or jump around, bypass like I did with the thermostat, always make sure that you remove those and you untape because that is a safety and those need to function as normal. Otherwise, it's a big fire safety hazard. So make sure after we're done testing, we remove the tape and we remove our jumper wires just to make sure that you or you and your family are safe. Uh, remember, just as a reminder, before you can test, your door is a safety. Make sure that you do have this taped or you're holding this or someone is holding this. 
make sure that you or somebody is either pushing this in and remember this is 120 volts so be extremely cautious uh, make sure it's being taped in or you're holding it in here on the plastic or someone else's before the call from the thermostat you cannot be calling for heat when you push this in it will fail okay guys we're gonna pull out our good old trusty meter here and again yours might not look like this like we've mentioned in the other videos but all we're gonna do is we're gonna set it to our volts AC for this test now most at least somewhat newer gas valves look similar to this or there's a Honeywell that has a plastic dome to it uh, but most single stage gas valves are going to have these two wires that go to it which is your 24 volt and your on off switch so there is no easy way to test and make sure that you are getting gas through as a homeowner to see if the solenoid is behaving like it should. Now, if you know you are getting voltage here, you know your control board is doing what it's supposed to and should be sending a continuous 24 volts. <clears throat> if you are getting that and it's just gonna go into its normal lockout like it was before, you know you've got power at this point we're going to have to check and see if the gas is going through the valve now the easiest way to do this is as you can see sometimes you're going to have a lot of this putty this glue leak lock is uh, usually what they call it to make your life easier you're going to need to remove your gas flex line here first no matter if you've got hard pipe that comes through which is code you should you should not have that flex line coming into your unit but once you unscrew this what you want to undo is come over here on either side of your manifold you're going to have where it's screwed in so you see where this goes all the way around here you want to take this whole thing off uh, and that's because you're going to need leverage in order to remove this hard line from the gas valve because it's going to be stuck on there really good. Uh, if you have a vise, that is wonderful to use to get this hard pipe out of your valve. So once you remove all of this, so again, unscrew the entire manifold section here. And for testing, it's actually good to leave that on there so you can see if you are actually getting gas pressure through your orifices. And you can't see them here until you actually remove it, but there's going to be some little brass orifices there where the gas is going to come through into your in-shot burners here to light. And these cannot be clogged. So that is something else we're looking for when we're testing or diagnosing a bad gas valve is making sure that yes, one, it is opening here, fully opening for the gas to get through. And two, that you do not have a clog somewhere within these orifices or potentially in this little bitty area right here between your plates you can see this little tiny area here okay always make sure that those are lined up as well even if this first orifice is clogged nothing else will come through here so remember even if it's just this one that's clogged these will not light because it has to go through this first section here in order to allow more gas through for these to light as well. So keep that in mind. These can also get clogged. So you're going to remove this. You can take a paper clip or something in that little orifice that's in there. 
and you know move it around clean it out once you remove this whole thing here i'll show you over at the um i'll show you over at the parts counter how we're going to check that out but once you remove everything here you're going to blow into the area where your gas is going to go in <laughs> If you don't want to do that or you want someone else to do that, because you are going to have to blow air into this to see if the gas is going to be going through all of this. So your air should be traveling all the way through and you should feel the air coming out of these little small orifices here. So if you're not feeling that air coming out, that means that your gas valve is not opening like it should, therefore your gas valve is bad. So remember, obviously remember you have your power shut off. Please remember to cut your 120 volt power. Um, remove the flex first, unscrew your manifold, remove this whole entire thing here, and then first blow into it and make sure that the airflow is coming out. You're going to keep that on there, your 24 volts, because you're going to need to be able to have the 24 volts on there in order to actually open the gas valve up. So do make sure you are either jumping 24 volts into here or you have a way to go from here to jump it to where you're testing it because you will have to have 24 volts in order for this to open like it should. <clears throat> so also make sure you have 24 volts going here so that this solenoid make the necessary contacts to open. After we do that and we remove the valve with the manifold, we open it with the 24 volts and we blow into it if you do feel air coming out of each one of these orifices, we've got something else going on. So one more thing to mention that could be your gas valve is a short. So if you have a shorted gas valve, the best way to check and see if it is your valve that's actually popping your fuses if you can't locate the short in your heating cycle, what I would do is unplug your gas valve. Now remember, this can only be happening in heat if you are getting a short. And usually it will happen on your control board if you don't have one in line to your gas valve, but you're popping the fuse on your control board. You've tried everything, you've tried removing the thermostat wires, you've been going down the list to figure out where that short could be. It could be on your gas valve. So aside from this not opening like it should, and you're not getting air coming through and through those orifices like we talked about when we're checking to make sure that our gas is actually getting into those burners, if you're also getting a short, it could be this. So if you do remove your wires and turn on the heat and voila, there is no short. And there you have it. Your gas valve has shorted. So hopefully this has been helpful for all of you when diagnosing a gas valve. When you do go to replace a gas valve, if you've diagnosed it properly and you figure out that yes, this is the problem, make sure that you don't put a lot of that leak lock because technically gas pipe should be sealed, that black pipe. You don't necessarily need to use leak lock, but you can just make sure you're not using a ton of that because that stuff can actually get in your gas valve and gunk it up. And then think of how confusing that would be if you just replaced a new gas valve and all of a sudden it's not working. So just keep that in mind 
when you do get a new gas valve, make sure you don't put a lot of that on the threading. You can put it on the male side, and then I would avoid putting it on the female side. If you do, just put a nice little light layer there. So when you go to install it, also don't over tighten it. It's tempting, I know. But trust me when I say this is low gas pressure. So tighten it to where it's secure, but don't over tighten it when you install it. Well, there you have it. That's what we're looking for when we're checking for a bad gas valve. Just let me know down in the comments below if you have any other questions. And as always, thank you for joining me today. And I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. Bye, guys.